You know, there are some absolutely amazing, stunning achievers, and that's what we would call our cochlear implant stars. And one of these high achievers is Alison Wynne Stanley, who was born with no hearing, but now at the age of nine is learning music. On the day that she had the hearing test, um, just suddenly there was that definite diagnosis for being profoundly deaf. She's the first deaf person I knew. At the age of 14 months, you're looking forward thinking, how am I going to teach her to read when she can't hear? We were introduced very quickly to the hearing house as an option for support. And I remember the day that we walked in there, its, it's environment is that of a home. And knowing that we were just suddenly surrounded by people who had the same um, drive and enthusiasm and passion for getting the full potential from her. And there's no doubt that Alison has big plans for the future. I'd like to be a vet because I love animals. I'd also like to be an actor and a singer, but that would probably be my hobby. We always have to, to, to face this reality with the parents together that we would, we would always try to get speech and language and we'd try to get it to normal levels by the time children get to school. Sometimes we don't quite get there, but many times we do, and perhaps about 70 or 80 per cent of the time we do achieve that. For Rihanna's family, the auditory therapy is some way ahead as they face their first hurdle, the upcoming operation. It's kind of a mix of being prepared and a little bit maybe anxious or nervous about how things will be after the surgery, how she's going to react and how she's going to recover. Has mommy got glasses? Oh, should I try Shona this? Gilby and her two children, Aaron and Isla, are both receiving auditory verbal therapy at the Hearing House. We could suddenly see where we were going, you know, especially having two deaf children. We've spent a lot of time at the Hearing House. I mean, there's been times when it has literally been like our, our second home. And even Mr Potato Head is lending a hand with Isla's speech therapy. So what we're going to do with the Mr Potato Head this morning, Mum, you're going to ask for the pieces and then I want her to ask for them as well. Yeah, do you want some glasses? All day. Yeah, all right. All that we do here in AFA is to coach the parent, to say, this is where your child's at, this is what you can expect next, and this is how you can make it happen. And making it happen is a relentless process for Shona, and home is the best place to develop Aaron and Isla's speech. As we only see the child for an hour a week, it's really the parents who are going to be doing the work at home. Would you like one of these, Isla? Yeah. It's a 24 hour a day, seven day a week job. We teach them to constantly talk with their child. Everything is about pouring language into them. Do you want to train too, Isla? I mean, we feel very, very lucky that, yeah, I'm able to be at home with the children at the moment. But not every family can afford to have one parent at home full time, which is where the Hearing House Preschool can be a big help. It's what we call a reverse integration system. So we have 10 normally hearing children just from the local community, and every session there will be up to five hearing impaired children. So the normally hearing children are the language models for the hearing impaired children. It's a great chance for the children to socialise with other children and interact with them. And it's all about interacting at the Hearing House, today is Loud Shirt Day, which is the annual fundraising appeal of the Hearing House and the Southern Cochlear Paediatric Program. We very much rely on our fundraising department, which has two people, and they're out there raising all the money we need to provide the services to the families that come here. We are about to brave going into the CBD of Auckland. We're going to take um, 13 of our children on the bus down into the Langham Hotel for a visit this morning. Some of them haven't been on the bus either, so it's a first experience for quite a few of them. The Langham is one of our supporters for the Hearing House, and so they've invited us today. Yeah! I think it really benefited our children with a hearing loss. It was just a fantastic opportunity for lots of language um, and new experiences. The Hearing House staff also advise other preschools on working with cochlear implant kids. That's what I like about the Hearing House, is that they offered to help the kohanga. For karakia they sit in a circle. Lydia's told them how to help Eli, put Eli closest to the person speaking. 
My name is Lillian Shelford. I'm a head teacher here in El Kohangareo. My role is to teach our children um, aspects of Māori tanga. Well, when Eli started, he was a pipi here, and we noticed as he was getting a bit older that um, he wasn't sort of responding to a lot of the commands or when we talked to him. Dramatic changes since he's had his and um, cochlear implant. It's wonderful. He's a lot more relaxed and settled and he gets into the routine quite well with the rest of his peers, you know, rest of the tamariki. His interaction, I'm just so over the moon. Words can't explain how I feel, uh, you know, my emotions of seeing Elijah today and the way he communicated and spoke. Yeah, it was wonderful. You know, I thought it would make it harder wanting my son to learn Māori first. But with them working together, I get best of both worlds, man. It's great. Another important factor facing parents is the question of whether they can afford to give their child a second implant. Isla and Aaron Gilby both have two. Very expensive. The, the cost is about $45,000. But we're really pleased that we, we made the decision to do it. The way his speech and his language has progressed since he got the second one is, is faster than we could have ever hoped. Children who have two implants, or are lucky enough to have two implants, do actually function just that little bit better in the classroom and can cope with background noise. Unfortunately, it's not a state-funded reality in New Zealand at the present time. I do remember having a difference about having two implants. It helped, it was louder, and I knew which direction the sounds were coming from. It was much easier. The government is funding for one device only. If we want her to have both ears to have the implant, then we'll have to fund for the other one. And it's very expensive, so we cannot afford it. At Auckland's Gillies Hospital, it's a huge day for the Ballingit family. Two-year-old Rihanna is about to have a cochlear implant operation. Kind of a mixed feeling. I have a hard time sleeping for a couple of days. <laughs> Uh, after a long, long months of waiting for this, and finally it's coming. Initially, we, when we when we didn't know about like like a choice of having the cochlear implant, we were, I think, um, a bit scared to to face. Yeah. <coughs> to face the, the possibility of her being deaf. Minutes later, Rihanna is in surgery. This will be a delicate three-hour operation. Dr. Neef has to make a hole in Rihanna's head, cutting through the skin and then the bone. Satisfied that the cavity is large enough, he is now ready for the implant. All that's left is the very delicate job of threading the tiny wires around the auditory nerve. The cochlear implant won't be turned on until three weeks after surgery to give Rihanna time to heal. Switch on day is always nerve wracking for parents as they find out if their child's implant was successful. The only time I've ever smiled when my son's been screaming. I had to hold him for switch on and I felt yeah. his whole body tense up. He was just rigid from top to toe and then he started screaming. and. Although negative response from him, it was a positive sign. They said to me, he'll either go quiet or else he'll cry. But we just need a reaction. And they switched him on and straight away his eyes just started beaming. For Rihanna's family, the big day has finally arrived. Mixed emotions. Yeah, we're, we're, we're very excited and at the same time we're nervous. Minutes later, it's the moment of truth as audiologist Rachel prepares to switch on Rihanna's implant. So she may not hear it right away. I'm just going to start soft and build up. Okay. On. Yeah. We're very happy with how things turned out today. It's like a, a big burden's been lifted. It's really good to see this finally happen. I think it's a hard road for parents to come in for assessment and to know that that outcome of Rihanna responding to sound, that's just going to start a whole new journey for them as a family. I, 
I think I felt like I wanted to cry, but yeah, I didn't want to cry because I didn't want to ruin the excitement. Lots of doors have been opened for her. She'll start to go to ballet class. To listen talk. to music. Yeah, yeah, she'll be able to listen to music. Yeah. And hopefully sing. <laughs> <laughs> This program was funded by New Zealand On Air.